Hi, I'm Professor David Atley, and this is Topics in Astronomy. Thank you for joining me. In this video, I'll be talking to you about the famous Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei and how he used the telescope to revolutionize our understanding of our solar system. Let's get started. First, what's a telescope? Essentially, it's just a collection of lenses or mirrors. Most modern telescopes use mirrors, but Galileo used lenses. It's a collection of lenses that focus light from a faraway object to do two things. First, they magnify the image so that a tiny, tiny image that you maybe couldn't even resolve with your eye becomes expanded so you can see a lot more detail. Second, it allows you to collect more light than you could just with your pupil, so you can see fainter objects than you would be able to with your unaided eye. The first telescope, as far as we know, was built and patented by a Dutch spectacle maker, or eyeglass maker, depending on who you're talking to, uh, by, the names of, by the name of Hans Lippershey in 1608. And a little bit later, Galileo built his own version of the telescope that he then used to study the sky. Across the bottom of the screen, you'll see a simple diagram for how a telescope works. Essentially, you have a distant object whose light comes towards the telescope. It gets focused through first an objective lens, that's the big lens at the far end of the telescope, and then moves through a single lens or a collection of lenses that we call an eyepiece to form an image that you can then see with your eye. One notable thing about the optics assembly as depicted here is that it creates an inverted image. So it takes an upright object and flips it upside down. That's why that arrow that you see about two thirds of the way towards the right of the graphic is inverted. This is common in a lot of eyepieces that you find in telescopes, especially for astronomical applications. One of Galileo's important innovations was that he figured out a way to get around that so he could produce an upright image. Galileo is famous for astronomy, but also for physics and as one of the founders of modern science. So the discipline of using experimental and observational empiricism to drive results. He was not the first person to propose this. Uh, we know that an Arab astronomer by the name of Allah al-Din ibn al-Shatir, and if you're an Arabic speaker, I apologize to you. I'm sure that I've mangled that name. Um, but that astronomer also had proposed an empirical approach to science, so getting rid of a lot of the philosophical baggage that had been introduced by the ancient Greek natural philosophers. But for some reason, when al-Shatir proposed a purely empirical approach to astronomy, it didn't really stick, but when Galileo proposed it a few centuries later, it did. So it became common among European scientists to base conclusions on observed results about the universe or observed results in a lab, depending on the problem they were trying to address. Galileo heard about the telescope that had been invented by Lippershey and built his own, which he then showed off to his colleagues in the university, and after a little while he realized that he could use his spyglass, not just as a spyglass to look at pirate ships off on the horizon, but also to do astronomy. Galileo is the first person who's recorded to have turned a telescope towards the sky and used it to study the universe. When he did that, he made a number of really important discoveries. Some of them I'm going to gloss over, like, for example, he figured out that the Milky Way is actually a collection of billions of stars that are simply too faint to resolve by the human eye. But I'm going to focus on his four discoveries that are directly relevant to the structure of the solar system as it pertains to the heliocentric revolution. Once he started doing this and making all those discoveries, he began publishing his discoveries in first in a book in Latin, um, so that's the language of scholars, called the Sidereus Nuncius, or the Starry Messenger, to give it a loose translation. 
when the Catholic Inquisition got hold of his results, uh, Galileo basically got a slap on the wrist. He was told to stop publishing or defending the conclusions in that book, which suggested that the sun was the center of the solar system and that the Earth orbited around the sun. So Galileo at least publicly complied with the demands of the church until about a decade later when he published a new book called A Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, in which he had two characters debating the nature of the universe, one advocating for geocentrism and one advocating for heliocentrism. Uh, part of the problem that got Galileo into trouble is that he depicted the character arguing for the Earth solar system, the one favored by the church, as quite foolish and stupid. And when he did that, it was a fairly thinly veiled attack on the position of the church, and perhaps even more importantly, Galileo wrote his dialogue in Italian and not in Latin. So he was writing it in the language of the people and not in the language of scholars, and he ended up in very serious trouble for that. He was forced to recant, to publicly state that the Earth was the center of the solar system, not the Sun, and was sentenced to house arrest for the rest of his life for his suspicious behavior. It wasn't until hundreds of years later, in 1992, under the reign of Pope John Paul II, that Galileo was finally exonerated of heresy. So what did Galileo see in his telescope that led him to this really extreme conclusion and to this confrontation with the Catholic Church. He made four key observations, and I'm going to list them here in order, in my judgment, of increasing importance. So the first two, Galileo observed that the moon contains surface features like craters and mountains, and also that the sun rotates, has spots, and that those spots change over time. These observations are significant because they contradict one of the foundational principles, according to Aristotle, that form the basis of the Ptolemaic geocentric view of the solar system, which is to say that these two observations show that celestial bodies are not exact, unchanging spheres. They have blemishes, they have mountains and craters and freckles that come and go. The third observation was that Galileo observed what appeared to be stars in the vicinity of Jupiter, and as he came back night after night, he realized those stars were changing position, but they were always moving along with Jupiter as Jupiter moves across the sky. In essence, Galileo had discovered moons orbiting another planet, orbiting the planet Jupiter. These are what we now call the four Galilean moons. They're the largest and brightest moons of Jupiter, though there are many others that Galileo was unable to observe. If you look through a good pair of binoculars or a small backyard telescope, you might see something like the image that you see on the top of the slide here. If you are fortunate enough to be NASA, so you can send a spacecraft to Jupiter and get much higher quality images, you'll see pictures like what you see across the bottom of the slide. So across the bottom of the slide, the images collected by the Galileo orbiter, which was sent to Jupiter in the late 1990s, those are the moons Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto in order of increasing semi-major axis of their orbits. So why is the discovery of these moons important? Um, there's at least two independent reasons. First, this shows that the Earth is not the only center of motion in the solar system. Up until this point, everyone could agree on one thing, which is that the moon goes around the Earth. So regardless of the behavior of the sun or any of the planets, for sure everyone agrees the moon orbits the Earth. Another important consequence is Galileo's realization that these moons were not left behind by Jupiter as Jupiter moves along its orbit. And that was one of the key arguments for why the Earth could not be orbiting around the Sun, that the Earth would leave behind its moon if it were in fact moving. 
Since Jupiter does not do that, it knocks down that argument against a heliocentric solar system. But the fourth and, in my view, most important of these significant observations was Galileo's observation of the phases of Venus. Galileo looked at Venus and he saw that it goes through a complete cycle of phases, including a full phase. So why is that important? It tells us that Venus has to orbit the Sun. That's a big leap, so let's unpack that and figure out where it comes from. In the old geocentric Ptolemaic solar system, Venus is what's called an inferior planet. It's closer to the Earth than the Sun is, which means that Venus has to follow along an orbit that looks like the one depicted across the bottom of the slide. So Venus always has to remain between the Earth and the Sun. Uh, Venus is not allowed to go allow around behind the Earth on the far side from the Sun because of observational constraints that say Venus is never more than about 40 to 50 degrees on the sky away from the Sun. If that's the case, Venus remains between the Earth and the Sun and you never get a full Venus. You get basically either a new Venus or a crescent Venus as depicted in this diagram, and that's it. Clearly, that's not what Galileo saw. Instead, he saw a full Venus, which requires Venus to be behind the Sun rather than in front of it. So instead of the geocentric solar system, as we have saw in the last few graphics, instead, Venus has to go around the Sun in order to achieve a full phase when it's directly on the far side of the Sun. So this graphic showing a heliocentric solar system with both the Earth and Venus orbiting around the Sun successfully explains why Venus has a full phase. And that observation is what ultimately convinced Galileo, though you could argue that he may have been wrong about this, that the Earth has to orbit the Sun. So I think Galileo probably overinterpreted his data a little bit, but he did nevertheless come to a very important conclusion, and that was by using his telescope to study the sky, he figured out that there was a serious flaw in the old geocentric solar system. At the very least, Venus has to go around the Sun rather than around the Earth, and that demonstrates the necessity of a fundamental reworking of the Ptolemaic geocentric view of the solar system. Galileo also managed to knock down some arguments against the heliocentric solar system and to undermine in the process some of the philosophical underpinnings that had led to the Ptolemaic system in the first place. Um, so Galileo's observations using his telescope were one of the most important steps towards acceptance of a sun-centered or heliocentric solar system during the process of the heliocentric revolution. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to talk to you again soon on another Topic in Astronomy.